Hey, welcome back to the Genesis Principle Fine Art. My name is Alton Jones. If it's your first time joining me on my channel, thank you for joining me. Thank you for checking out my content. I'm an oil painter. Today I'm finalizing on the yellow face painting. I'm painting, painting in all the flowers in the foreground, all of the yellow flowers that speckled throughout the foreground on the grass. I'm painting the grass in today and all the little shrubs and twigs and things like that. The visible portion of this, the curb that's showing, I'm, I'm painting that in as well. Uh, if you see my eyes darting down, that's because I'm looking at the painting trying to figure out what I need to get done. So I'm painting in also the portion of the street that's visible. And then I'll be setting this one aside to dry and getting it varnished and sent off to the studio that frames all my work. So that's what I'll be doing today. So my intro will run for 30 seconds and I will see you back on the canvas. Roll tape. Seriously? Roll tape. Yeah. Roll tape. Okay, so I'm back on the canvas. So I thought I'd give a quick shot of the entire, the entire scope of the painting so you can see what everything looks like right now and um, you can have a good idea of where we are. Um, today, I'll be working in the, the bottom half, just finishing the extreme foreground here out in this area. So I'll be painting in all the, uh, the grass in this area, all the little shrubs and different things like that in this area. And then hopefully after finishing that and putting a little bit more flowers, these yellow mustard flowers that are speckled throughout this area, then hopefully I can finish that and get to a little bit of the, the actual ground that's showing along the curbside there and also finishing the curb and, and working on the little portion of the street that's visible there. And I think this one will be done. So this is where we are. This is where we are now. So, okay, let's get going. I think from this point on, I'm probably just going to use my microphone and speak through that and kind of narrate, but uh, I'm speaking directly into the camera now, um, but I think from this point on, I'll be using a microphone, so my voice might sound a little bit different, but nonetheless, it's, it's, it's me and we're, we're, we continue from here. And again, thank you for joining me and thank you for going through this process with me as well. Hopefully you're learning something in the process. Thank you. I'm using a short handle liner brush uh, for, for detailing in here in the foreground. And uh, if you look at the bristles, you can tell the bristles are very short. They're probably less than a quarter of an inch or just about a quarter of an inch tall. And the reason for that is because the consistency of the paint is quite thick and if you're using a script liner or a liner with long bristles it won't move your paint around as well as the small the short stiff bristle that's the reason for this uh, shorter bristle bristle brush the handle doesn't make too much difference I mean if you want to stand back and paint you can do that with uh, a taller bristle I guess that would be necessary that would be necessary for a person who wants to do that but it's not really necessary for the actual painting process itself or for the technique of painting but the length of the bristle is very necessary that they're short because the shorter bristles are stiffer if you can find a, a a very thin liner that the bristles are long and, and very stiff will great, but if you can't, try to find the best short bristle brush that you can to do these types of, of uh, small detail. You can use a taller liner brush to do fine detailing and it would work just fine, but your paint consistency will have to change, it will have to be very thin in order to do this sort of uh, 
to paint that sort of a detail. Um, now you can see me using a brush that might be questionable to you if you're looking at it. This is actually a, a DIY brush. It's a homemade brush. I made this myself. And it's simply by taking a piece of bamboo, uh, depressing a pin or a needle through the tip of it to get a hole that's small enough that you can fit a few brush hairs through. And you put those in and I've cemented them in with just crazy glue it's very simple and uh, the reason for this type of brush with a very few bristles it may have about three bristle hair strands in it and that's to do extremely fine detail or fine detail that looks like they're far away from you i should mention that it does require a bit of skill and a certain way of thinking if you're going to use it to do certain types of fine details. If you're going to use it to make a straight line, you won't have a problem. If you're going to use it to make a slightly arced arc line or a curve, it's fine. If you're going to make angled lines, it's also fine. But the only thing is, once you start curving a line, you have to think as if you're using an 18th century fountain pen to make the line in order to make the lines work the way you want them to. If you don't, your lines will be a lot thicker than you anticipate them to be. So in using an 18th century fountain pen or line or, or script writer, 
You have to release the amount of pressure you place on your wrist when you're making a curve or your curve becomes very wide. So it's the same idea with this type of a makeshift uh, script liner brush because it only has a few brush hairs in it. So you have to think they, they it operates almost like a knife blade. So you have to release the pressure off of your hand and kind of spin the tip of the brush if you want to make a curved line and keep the uh, the consistency of the thickness of the line same the same from start to finish. You have to release the pressure from your wrist. You can't pressure all the way through. Your line will end up being a lot thicker than you anticipate it to be. So that's the only difference, but it can do all those things. And if you'd like to see me do that in a demonstration or video, drop me a line and I can um, try to put something together for that real quick, maybe about 15 minutes or so. This is the foreground of the painting, but still I want to convey the idea that I am not right up on the actual area viewing it. You're still far back looking at an area in the distance. So you don't want too much um, vivid detail or photo, or photo realness. You still want the idea of present detail, but some things are just suggested. And the rest is left to the eye and the brain to make the connection that those details are actually present so that's the reason for using this type of aligner is for the the finer type of detailing and to give an impressionistic kind of a, a detailed presence if you will I think I also mentioned in one of my videos that I do like when a painting looks real, but I don't like when a painting looks like a photograph. If you paint with a photorealistic or a hyperrealistic type of skill or technique, or that's what you fancy, that's what you like, that's fine. I think artists who paint with that sort of detailing are just amazing. But for me personally, I like when a painting looks painterly. It, it conveys that artistic appeal to the painting, that it was touched by human hands and it's not something that was rendered by a machine like a photograph. And so I like, that's why I use the, the term impressionistic realism, if I haven't used that before. It's, uh, it conveys that type of impressionistic realism so it's still realism but some things are kind of it's impressionistic it's it, it's kind of conveyed to the mind and the mind completes the picture just the suggestion is made I know the details on the flowers in the foreground are quite small and the smaller an object is, the less fine detail is communicated or visible to you. But nonetheless, you still have to communicate or render these forms so that it conveys what exactly they are, even from a distance. The further away, obviously, some things are less um, recognizable but you still have to give the impression or the suggestions that these things are what they they're supposed to be so even with the flowers in the foreground though they're speckled throughout and they're very small still try to imitate their shape the concept here is to really paint what you see and not paint an idea it's which is kind of ridiculous or it's an oxymoron because you can't really paint what you see. What you're seeing is already there, so it can't be redone. But you're giving a suggestion of these things anyway. Um, this is really this is really deep thinking, which is kind of unnecessary, but just this is the way I think. So you're giving the impression that these things are exactly what you're saying they are with your painting. 
So try to shape your objects according to what you're seeing on your reference photograph or on the area that you're looking at if you're at an, actually, an actual scenery and painting uh, plein air. As this started out as a plein air piece, of, as I've said in some videos before this, but I decided to finish it inside my studio. But I do have reference photographs and video footage and things like that to go by. So the most important thing to gather from what I'm trying to say is to render the forms according to what you're seeing. And keep in mind that the concept is to paint what you see. Okay, I think this one is finished. I think this one is complete now. Just a couple little minor things and my signature and this one is being set aside to dry. I'll be varnishing it once it's dried. Uh, I will show a bit of the varnishing process. Actually, I'll show all of the varnishing. And if I can show it after it goes to the studio and gets framed, maybe I can show all of that in one, one, one short quick video so you can see what that's like but we're at the end of this one thank you for taking the journey with me through the yellow face painting hopefully you've learned something as well as i've learned things on my way too it's always a learning process through every painting so thanks again and i'll see you in my next video <music>